station and at the parking lot now. Good evening. Please. My name is Liz Fellian Lanchak, and I am your cantor for this Mass. Today's Mass is being offered for Mr. Frank Antoineau Sr. and Dominic and Lucy DiCaprio. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, and our celebrant for this Mass is Father Brendan. Attention all current lectors. Please be sure to pick up your 2021 lector book in the sacristy. The parish 2021 calendars are now available in the church, in the bins outside of each church location and Because of the seriousness of the COVID-19 spread at this time, it is once again imperative that all present in our church buildings are wearing masks and keeping the proper distance. If you do not have a mask, the ushers will provide you with one. But no one can remain in the building without wearing a mask. If you have a medical condition that prevents you from wearing a mask, we ask that you attend the parking lot mass. Please note the parish offices will be closed on December 24th and 25th in observance of the Christmas holiday. Dear friends in Christ, on this fourth and final Sunday of Advent, we recall that the fullness of time when the Son of God became human, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, we remember Mary's joyful acceptance of God's plan in her yes to God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. All four candles are lit, as you can see, and as these lit four candles on the Advent wreath, let us join Mary as willing servants of the Lord. May our yes welcome Christ into our world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge now our sins, so that we may more worthily enter these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God, and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of God, and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. 
Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord, amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? I was the one who took from, took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you, whenever you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will rise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And her, and coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And, his, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who is called barren for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Dear friends, good evening. We hear this familiar story, of course it's so appropriate to hear the story of the Annunciation just before Christmas. But in the Gospel of Luke, let's back up just a little bit uh, with a story that we did not hear uh, in this passage, but a little bit before this. Chronologically speaking, six months before this, uh, when the angel Gabriel, the same one that made this message to Mary, that she would conceive Jesus in her womb, visited upon Zechariah, uh, who was married to Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, uh, who was a priest. And he was uh, carrying out his priestly duties in the temple when the angel Gabriel appeared to him and said that you and your wife will conceive a son. Now, Zechariah and uh, Elizabeth had been trying for many, many years to conceive a child and were unable to do so. And there was great shame at that time, and there's difficulty even now for couples who are unable to conceive a child. But in a particular way, there was great shame attached to it in those days. 
but this couple that had tried so hard had gotten old, far beyond the years in which a child could be expected, and so they gave up on that dream. But when Zechariah hears this message, he doubts it. He basically says, I'm too old, my wife is too old, there's no way. Let's juxtapose that with Mary, when she similarly hears a miraculous uh, conception of a child. Not a man and woman who are far beyond childbearing years, but a virgin who has had no relations with a man, and therefore, how could a baby possibly come along? But the difference between Zechariah and Mary is that Mary couldn't understand, but she still believed. Zechariah, he was a man of faith, he was a priest, he was offering sacrifice in the temple, and yet his faith just wasn't quite strong enough to take the angel at his word. And so the angel, really God, strikes him uh, mute. For all the nine months of John the Baptist, uh, that he's in the womb of his mother, Zechariah is unable to speak. And it's only when John is born, and they ask Zechariah, what shall we call this child? What shall we call your son? And he writes on a tablet, John. And it's only then when the fullness of that promise to this old couple is fulfilled, where his tongue is loosed. And there's a great canticle of Zechariah in which he praises God, because though his faith could not believe it in the beginning, he had the proof right there in his arms. There's a beautiful canticle of Mary as well, but not waiting until the promise is fulfilled. She trusted even beforehand. And that's why as soon as the angel leaves, she has the faith and trust that I don't know how this could be. I don't know how the Holy Spirit could conceive a child in my womb, and yet God said so. So I believe it. God's word is good enough for me. Sometimes you and I, as we navigate our lives of faith, whether it's through the sacraments or it's through reading scripture, prayer, all the many ways that God invites us to draw closer, all the many ways that we've been taught and practiced, most of us for a lifetime. But sometimes we doubt. Do I really need to go to Mass? Now, Corona kind of makes things different. You know, it's not a sin for you to be missing Mass during this time because we all have to be safe and careful. But during normal, normal circumstances, do I really have to go to a priest to confess my sins? Why can't I just go to God? Why go to a middleman? Why go to a priest? Or why go to Mary? Why don't I just go straight to the top? Speak to God himself. But when we read the scriptures, we see that the sacraments are the ways in which God invites us to himself. When he says your sins are forgiven, when he gives that authority to his priests, it's not me saying, hey, I can do this. God told us through the church that the priest has that authority, that Mary is the mediatrix of grace. She mediates grace. And so when we turn to her, she brings our petitions before the Father and before her Son through her spouse, the Holy Spirit. So when we hear these things, well, the church says this or the church says that, not everything in the church um, has the strength of believing in confession, believing in the Eucharist, believing in Mary, but those things that really matter. If God said it, isn't that good enough for you and for me to place our trust in it? And so when God invites us to draw closer to himself through the sacraments, let us never fear that those intimate encounters with him truly are moments of relationship and grace. And so if God invites you, maybe he won't send an angel, wouldn't it be great if God sent an angel every time he wanted us to do something for him and with him? So often it's a much subtler way in which he approaches us. But will we have the faith and trust of Mary or will we doubt like Zechariah? Even if we doubt, of course, God can use us. 
He used Zechariah and Elizabeth. But if we give him that much more room, that much more of our lives and our hearts, he can do even more with a Mary than with a Zechariah. So when God invites you to something, whatever it is, and maybe it might seem impossible. My sisters might have thought it was impossible that I would become a priest. <laughs> that serves them right. <laughs> but God invites us to things that are sometimes impossible, and yet we can do them, not without God. Don't even try. Not even for God, but with Him. Nothing is impossible. And so, when God invites you to follow him, when God invites you to a particular ministry at the parish, or maybe a vocation for our young people that aren't sure yet where God is inviting them to spend their life and their love, it's not impossible if God's inviting you to it. And so let us take great faith, and let's not be so much a Zachariah as we can be a blessed mother Mary. Let us now stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, while I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Placing our hearts before the Father, we bring these prayers and petitions as well. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, may the Lord bless him in his zeal and joy for the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected officials, may the Holy Spirit conform their hearts to charity and justice as they make their governing decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those traveling during this holiday season, may God guide them and keep them safe, especially during this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the little children who await the birth of a brother or sister, that they may learn to cherish the child in their mother's womb. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they soon come face to face with Jesus their Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now, together, let us pray our parish chair prayer. Lord Jesus, Jesus you told, you told us, us where, where your treasure is, is there your, your heart, heart is also. also. The parish of the Holy Spirit, Spirit treasures our faith in you, our children, and every person who gathers here. here. Help us to have the courage to sacrifice, to love, to love and, to and to build in your name. name. Guide us by your spirit of wisdom, wisdom, give success to the work of our hands, and keep us in your peace. peace. Saints, Saints, martyrs, and Mary, our mother, mother, pray pray for us. us. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and, min and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our, so our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Christmas is such a joyful time, I think, for anybody. It can be difficult for various reasons, but I think seeing children at Christmas is something that can always pick up our spirits. And so I just want to spend a send a special blessing to all the children that are here that aren't old enough to receive the Eucharist. There might be a few, but those throughout our parish who are preparing for the coming of the Lord at Christmas and presents at Christmas and, uh, and also for the coming of the Lord in the sacrament. So we we'll just want to spend a, send a special blessing their way the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. 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 And as you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. 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 And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.